All right, will you turn to the gospel according to Luke, please? While you're turning, let me give you an update. Uh, as I was gone last week uh, to check on my brother, uh, it was a safe trip. It was a sad trip. He had gone down a great deal since I had seen him last. Uh, he and I uh, spent some quality time together, just the two of us, uh, talking about heaven uh, and, and God's forgiveness and God's goodness in our life. Uh, my brother was saved when I preached my first sermon 57 years ago. I've said th th that to you before. But he got away. Uh, got a long way away. But he, uh, in his church, the other Sunday, he committed his life to Christ fresh and new. Uh, and the Holy Spirit lifted part of the load that he was carrying. I said to you, as I told you a month or so ago, about the status, and I said, I, I did my mother's funeral, I did my mother-in-law's funeral, but I cannot do my brother's funeral. And I asked you to pray for me, and you did. But before I left, he asked what I knew he was going to ask. And he said, Gerald, I know when you did mother's funeral, it was difficult. But he said, I want to ask you to do my funeral as well. If you can, he said, I will understand. And I said, my brother, I will do anything at all you ask me to do. So when that time comes and the Lord calls him home, I encourage you to pray for me like you have not prayed for me before because it will certainly be a very trying time in my life. As Mary and I left late on a Sunday afternoon because I had to come back on Monday. I had a meeting on Monday night. And I, uh, I, I, I told him I loved him and uh, we would see him again. But he started crying. Mary and I had not seen my brother cry like that before. He couldn't speak. He only cried. And I, I wanted to believe he, in his mind were these thoughts. I won't see you anymore. And so I walked away with a, with a heavy heart but also a joyful heart because I knew that he was prepared to meet God. So you continue to pray for him, and I will keep you updated about uh, where he is and what the status is. Luke chapter 22 and verse 14. Obviously, you see the table in front of me. Today is the Lord's Supper. Verse 14. And when the hour was come, Jesus sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it unto them saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. 
Obviously, Christ is in the upper room with his disciples to observe the feast of the Passover. But what they do not know is that uh, he is about to make a change for something new. Uh, for all of their entire life. As a matter of fact, uh, the, the Jews have been observing the Passover since Exodus chapter 12 and verse 14. Every year at the second week in April, and the Jews still do that today, and, uh, but, but, but the Lord made a change that it is no longer the Passover for the church, it is the Lord's Supper. And so for the rest of time, um, by the way, let me, let me make an observation here. The, the disciples sat here confused, I am content to believe, because they are there to celebrate the feast of the Passover. And, and on the table is what they have been eating every year all of their life. But the Lord has moved away from that. He picked up the bread and he said, This is my body which is broken for you. He overlooked the, uh, the, the uh, Passover meal that's on the table. And they didn't say anything, but they must have thought something is going different. And then he picked up the cup and he said, This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. Do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. He totally ignored the, uh, the, the, the Passover meal that was sitting on the table. And so he was doing something new. He said, uh, it is no longer the Passover meal, but it, is, it has now become the Lord's Supper. It is a different assignment. Since the Garden of Eden... Innocent blood has been shed for sin. When Adam and Eve did what God said don't do, uh, they brought the first sin into the world. Remember the Garden of Eden was paradise. There was no sin there. The animal kingdom did not have a vicious nature. The lamb would lay down with the uh, bear and the lion, and they would, they would play together. And Adam and Eve had on no clothes, uh, because their nature was not corrupt. They were living in this beautiful paradise of God. And so God had said to Adam and Eve, you may go anywhere you want to go, you may eat anything you want to eat in this garden, except, but there is one tree in the middle of the garden. Don't eat of the fruit of that tree. And don't touch that tree. The day you do, you shall surely die. I shorten the story in the interest of time. They ate what God said don't eat. And their eyes were opened. And Adam and Eve realized that they were naked. They tried to cover themselves with, with fig leaves. And the, the, the Lord had come down in the, in the cool of the day to, to talk with Adam and Eve, have fellowship with them. But when the Lord came down this day, they were in the forest behind the trees. And, and the Lord said, Adam, where, where art thou? And they said, we're, we're over here. But, and God said, what are you doing over there? And, and, and Adam said, we're naked. And God said, who told you you were naked? He said, did you eat of the tree? Obviously, that was a rhetorical question because God knew what they had done. And so, they, they did what God said don't do. Their eyes were open. And, um, and, and God had to make another change. Now, watch this. God killed an innocent animal. The blood was shed, and God made coats of skin and clothed Adam and Eve. Sin had come into the world. And when the first sin was committed, notice something, when the first sin was committed, it took an animal's blood to be shed to cover that 
sin. And so for the next 40 years, 4,000 years, the blood of innocent animals had to be shed to cover the sins of sinful people. And so every year, once a year, the priest would go into the Holy of Holies. He would kill an animal, offer the sacrifice, shed the blood for the sins of the people. All through the Old Testament, for 4,000 years, the animals were killed and their blood was shed for the sins of the people. All the blood that was shed by all the animals from the Garden of Eden down through the 4,000 years until Calvary was a type of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that was shed on Calvary's cross. The blood of those animals could only cover the sins of the people. It could not cleanse the sinner of his sin. In 1 John 1, 7, John said, The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth from all sin. Look at Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 26, he told the disciples what was about to happen. Matthew 26, 26, look. As they were eating, Jesus took bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with my Father in my Father's kingdom. So he shared with them, what is getting ready to happen. Now look at chapter 27. And verse 27. It is about to happen. Matthew 27. 27. This is what, this is what Christ said. Uh, my, my body is broken. My blood will be shed. And here it is. Matthew chapter 27. Verse 27. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into a common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had planted a crown of thorns and put it up on his head and a reed in his right hand, they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail! king of the Jews, and they spit upon him and took the reed and and the the stave and they, they beat him over the head with it and they smote him on the head. And after that, after they had mocked him, they put the robe, they took the robe off from him and put his own garment on him and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene Simon by name, and they, and they compelled him to bear his cross. And when they were coming to a place called Golgotha, that is to say a place of a skull, they gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall, and when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink, and they crucified him. Now, when he got to Calvary, he, 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 he carried his cross up the Via Dolorosa. Uh, he was so weak that he, that he could not carry for the loss of blood, the loss of sleep. And he fell, and, and they, they, they called Simon the Cyrene to come and carry the cross. And so Simon walked it up to the cross and, and laid it on the ground. When Christ got to the cross, or got to the top of of Calvary, 
they, they put him down on the cross. And the Roman soldier drove the huge nails in his hand. And they crossed his feet and they, they drove the nail through the tops of his foot into the cross. And they pushed it into place. And there, hanging suspended between the twilight of the two worlds, is the sinless Son of God. The crown of thorns on His head. Now, the, the, those who draw the picture have been very kind and gracious about Jesus. They, they painted a loincloth around Him. That was not the way it was. Christ died in open shame. He shed His blood. It ran from His hands. It ran from His side. It ran from His feet. It ran from His head. And then they understood on this day that they understand now what Jesus said in the upper room. This is my blood. This is my body that is broken. This is my blood which is shed for you. Then they understood it. You may be thinking, why would he allow them to do those things to him? And I would say, because he loved you and me and the whole world. No one ever loved you like Jesus. And on that cross, the sinless Son of God shed His blood for our sins. The cross has become a sign of love and forgiveness. When, you, when, you look at the, when we as, as children of God look at the cross, our mind is flooded with what Christ did for us. I shared with our Bible study group on Wednesday night, I read the, a true story. Two college students. One had never gone to church, didn't know anything about the Lord. The other grew up in the church, knew Christ as his Savior, and, and he told the story oftentimes to this friend of his that didn't know anything at all about what he was saying but he listened intently as, as the Christian uh, college student shared with his friend and he shared with him often so the time had come the young Christian said that I needed to press the issue and so he said I, I said to my friend You've heard me share the story of Jesus with you, the scriptures. And, and, and are you ready now to ask God to forgive you of your sin and receive him as your Savior? And the man very emphatically said, no. And he walked away. And the Christian said, I didn't hear from him for a number of days. One day my phone rang and he said to me, would you give me the verses that you gave me from the Bible so I can jot them down and I can read? And, and he gave them to him. And, and the man hung up and didn't get a chance for a conversation. Later, the, the, the non-Christian was there on a, on a swim, swim scholarship and from the, from, the, from the high dive, a, a, a real accomplished diver. And he had a, he had a key to the, uh, to the uh, university pool because he was training for the Olympics, and he could go and come. And he said, this night, about 11 o'clock, he went to the pool, climbed all the way to the top platform, 
to practice a dive. And he said, the, the, the pool was covered with, with glass. And the moon was shining bright. And, and he said, as he backed up to the edge of the diving board, he put out his arms to balance himself. And when he did, he looked out in front of him and he saw his shadow. And it was in the shape of a cross. And he said he dropped his arms and began to weep and he got down on his knees on that diving board. And he gave his life to Christ. Asked God to forgive him of his sin. Just after he prayed the prayer, the light suddenly came on in the pool area. A maintenance worker came walking in. You see, they were doing some work on the pool. But when the man on the diving board who had just received Christ looked down at the pool, there was no water in it. They drained it so they could repair it. And he realized then that the cross prevented him from committing a disaster, diving from 25 feet in the air into an empty pool. Listen, the cross is a sign of forgiveness and love like it was for that young boy on that day. And I, while I was home, I, I shared with my brother about what the cross meant to me and, and of what it is growing to mean to him and what it means to you and to me. And you see, it was the blood that was shed on that cross and that blood has washed our sins away. On April the 10th, 1958, that blood washed my sins away. And there in that upper room, Jesus said, this is my body which is broken for you. And this cup is the blood that has been shed for you. Now, we're about to do what Christ told us to do. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do so the Lord's death until He comes. That's what we're about to do. Now, if you know Christ as your Savior, maybe you're not a member here. Maybe you're not even a Baptist. But if you know Christ as your Savior, your sins have been washed away. I encourage you to partake. Don't, don't say, don't try to justify yourself by saying, but I'm not worthy to partake of the Lord's Supper. None of us are. But through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are made worthy. So I encourage you to partake. Now, uh, we will serve you the bread first. If you will hold it until we've all been served, then we will eat together. And then we will serve you the juice. And you will hold it as well. And then we will all partake together. Let's bow, please, for prayer. Father, in Jesus' name.